Hello world, this is Vinny Rodriguez, also known as 8 Figure Vision. I'm here to share this with you today, the next in our Vast Book series. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, what do we have today? I am delighted to share with you this book, Subliminal, by Mr. Leonard Mladeno. So he's a best-selling author of three New York Times best-selling books. Uh, and so the guy know what he's talking about. He uses scientific evidence, uh, experimental evidence, facts, and research to back every statement, every single word that's in this book. So, um, so I, I advocate for this book as being a good source of factual information. With that said, uh, I, I also really appreciate the language that he uses in here. I think it's very engaging. And uh, it's a it's a light-hearted book, but it goes into detail on the conscious and the subconscious mind, and how that actually affects the things that we do and the way that we are every day. So, taking a look at first the conscious mind, right? Uh, I want to give an example. Of something that really caught my attention was uh, on memory. He talks about our memory, right, and how our memory could be something that. Uh, we don't necessarily rely on but he says that uh, it's been proven through scientific research that that the memory the human memory is actually a phenomenal an incredibly accurate machine the thing is that we our memory we still have the same brain thousands of years ago that we have today but what's changed is our access to information and how readily available information is today Thus, our brain gets into an overstimulative process. It gets a little overwhelmed, we can say, right? So, what, it, what eventually happens is the brain in itself is still processing the same images, memories, thoughts, experiences. However, now it's doing it in an environment where there's a lot more stimulation. For example, uh, he talks about the birthday party in here like a, a child's birthday party right everyone's there and involved now if you had an impeccable memory you would remember every single detail about that party you would remember the the flower pattern on all of the ants that had attended that birthday you would remember right the the flavor of the cake uh the the where where all of the cream was put on the cake you would remember the taste to the finest detail you would remember the the expressions and the emotions of every person that attended that event you would remember what time they got there you remember all of that stuff right but honestly why would you want to remember that i mean really why would you want to remember all of those things you would only want to remember the things that are most important to you the things that are most useful to you Knowing the flower pattern on aunt, on the aunt's uh, attire is not something that's necessarily going to help you in the future, is it? So our memory has that, our brain has that capacity to filter thoughts or at least archive them unless we need them or have access to them for some reason, right? Like that example I just gave you, I could use that example for other purposes, but it might not be for uh for it might be for certain instances and not for other instances right so our memory is is a very powerful very accurate machine it's just it also has a filtering mechanism that way it stays as efficient as possible so that's the thing about memory it's the same reason why uh, they say that that 20 to 25 percent of eyewitness testimonials in any uh, legal investigation are wrong or false and the reason is because uh the way that our memory works people who are so sure so certain so positive that about our information about what we saw and yet they're still wrong and the reason why they're still wrong you see because what so it's a good thing and Right, because our mind 
our mind wants to get in a way the gist it wants to get the gist of the information because that's normally what's most important to us right you wouldn't necessarily read a book from first to last page and expect that you're going to remember every single word that's in this book you're going to remember the gist and as hard as you might try you're not going to remember every single thing so think about uh he mentions the example of of the case of jennifer thompson uh who was raped she uh and however she had she had an accurate account of her rapist and in a lineup she was able to clearly identify and it was down to two people she was clear, able to clearly identify the rapist she was so sure about it because during the time of her rape she had been very calm she had focused specifically on the details of the guy's face she remembered every little inflection and everything about his face so that if she had survived the rape then she would be able to account for it later on and identify him when the time actually happened that she that they had lined up the suspects she was so certain that that was the guy right so they and the guy had also actually admitted to doing so so um at the end of the, at the end of the case they had obviously uh they had obviously sent the 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 suspect to jail and uh they had given him actually two life sentences now 10 years later the guy who was now so the the suspect was brought to jail uh he he had actually begged and pleaded his attorney to look to review a dna sample that had surfaced uh, that was in storage for uh, over 10 years it was a sperm dna that they had uh, they had that they had looked into and they had, they had discovered recently so upon looking at the detail upon looking at the the dna results it showed that the guy that was sent to jail for two life sentences wasn't the guy it wasn't his dna in fact it was the dna of the other guy that she was so sure it was not so how could someone that would be so sure about their rapist about especially an event that that that's that important right an event that's that uh powerful how could they get it wrong how could she get that wrong well because she got the gist right in the height of so much simul of so much uh, different information and pressure and stress her mind took the information for what was the gist of someone that looked like the guy when in fact it actually wasn't the guy in the end right see so in a way our memory could help us or it could haunt us and these are the things that uh, we really can start looking in towards our mind and finding what works for us right what the kind of information do we find most important what do we discount right and when we're in times of pressure and stress how efficient can we gather information and facts in a way that will be accurate right think of it think of it in in a sense of social behavior right they did an experiment in this book they did an experiment where they talk about uh they experimented on rats and they showed that uh they did two experiments where some of the rats were sought as uh gifted right some of the rats were sought as a favorable and others were sought as unfavorable rats right they told that to the students that were in the study so the students had to identify which of the rats were going to were were going to respond more favorably and of course the rats that the students had that the students saw were un, were more favorable and that are participating more favorably the ones that they thought were unfavorable and that are participating more unfavorably same research that was in a study that they did in which they responded in which students and which students were given an IQ test and the students that were, after the results had surfaced they were going to do another IQ test but before doing that they announced the results to everyone some were were resulted as normal results some as brilliant and some as gifted so what do you expect happen with the students that saw their score as normal well 
Those students, the second time they took the test, actually did fairly well. They gained 10 points higher on their IQ test. But what do you think happened with the ones that were identified as gifted and brilliant, right? The ones that were identified as brilliant actually scored 30 points higher, and the ones that were scored as gifted were, were actually even significantly higher than the ones that were brilliant. Why is that? Well, that's because this was an expectation on their part to fulfill that same title, right? If you're called brilliant, it's sort of similar to law of attraction, but it's backed by scientific evidence here, guys. So the point is that conquer your mind, conquer your mind, conquer, understand what your mind is trying to tell you. Understand how your mind is being efficient and find what works for you, right? Understand when it is important to look at detail, right? And when it is important to really have more of a broad scope of things. And both are very important to have. So don't ever discount yourself from that. This is Vinny Rodriguez, also known as A Figure Vision. I'm signing out for today in our vast book series. This book, I give it a five out of eight. Uh, and guys, until next time.